The second half of the 2024 WWE Draft has concluded, and it has been a wide range of opinions from fans. A lot of it has been more on the negative side, with some cool positive moments, don't get me wrong. But let's see what is going on with the draft, and how can WWE fix it in the future? I'm Ace from Shockwave Sports, and let's answer the question, is the WWE Draft lame? Let's go back in time and circle around the Ruthless Aggression Era. That is when I started becoming a wrestling fan. For the first couple of months I started watching, I exclusively watched SmackDown, because it was on a Friday, and I honestly thought it was the main show because you would barely see any crossovers. Like, oh yeah, Undertaker and Batista are on this show. This is probably the main one. But little did I know, John Cena, Randy Orton, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels were all making Monday Night Raw a lit place. What I'm trying to say is that the brand split used to be important. Those would be the times you would only see those superstars on each show. Crossovers felt like a big deal. The brand split felt incredibly important, at least in kayfabe. It seemed wrestlers had legit loyalty to each show. So... When a WWE draft rolled around, it was must-see TV. Something like Rey Mysterio getting drafted to Raw in 2008 was a huge deal because he was on SmackDown for so long before that. Or you have great crossover matches, like a multi-person brand battle royal on draft nights. A lot of those times, they would be the first time some of those wrestlers worked with each other on TV. It was such a cool era to watch live, at least with draft nights. Let's not talk about the other episodes from that era. But we fast forward to the current iteration of the brand split, and it's just the same people getting drafted to the show they were already on, and they're probably going to still show up on Raw or SmackDown all the time anyway. I mean, look at WrestleMania weekend these past couple of months. The last time I checked... Roman Reigns was on SmackDown, Cody Rhodes was on Raw, and it just feels like once the Rumble rolls around, the draft is just irrelevant and there is no brand split. Now once in a while over these two days, you get a cool NXT call-up. Don't get me wrong, Carmelo Hayes and Ilya Dragunov are going to be great additions to both SmackDown and Raw. Don't get me wrong, I'm also intrigued with what they'll do with all the other call-ups these past two draft days. And yeah, Baron Corbin also got called up from NXT. Again. But those moments were very small parts in this overall mid-draft. In my opinion, I think they should just bring back the lottery system. I don't care if you want to do a giant screen with a random graphic, or Nick Aldis and Adam Pearce having physical picks and plastic balls. Either way, I think me and a lot of fans would be more satisfied. It creates kayfabe brand loyalty and a more exciting episode of television. But let's have a little fun right now. I'm about to go through every pick in the WWE Draft in 2024 and tell you what I think they will do in the next calendar year to maybe see how these picks make sense. Let's start with Monday Night Raw. Hopefully more main event title storylines and a reunion with his brother. Get well soon, probably you versus Roman when you're both back. The future of Raw? Maybe finishing her story and becoming a champion. Probably a multiple time WWE speed champion. Proving the fat shamers wrong. I see title inbound, and maybe a tag team title run in that faction. A lot of potential, but we'll probably lose to Becky Lynch. Another tag title run, I guess. More flips. Please just let her go solo and let her cook. Trish Stratus, Toronto, Money in the Bank match inbound? World champion in Berlin, and hopefully future mid-card champion for Ludwig. Unfortunately, the wrestlers, the faces will beat up all year while they feud with somebody else. Money match with Drew, and maybe a world title reign. Uncle Howdy faction? They will feud with Carlito for eternity. Money match with CM Punk, and finishes his story at Clash at the Castle. Feed him Gunter. A good veteran tag team to have on TV. Team Gable? We'll have cool spots on TV. 
Probably another tag title reign and more dancing. Please retire. Please retire. Please retire. Shout out to our friend Rob on the channel. I hope they get a tag title run for him. He's a big fan of him. British. Um, show up? Now, let's take a look at Friday Night Smackdown's picks. Guaranteed tag title reign, and we'll probably have an awesome match against Jade. The best prospect on the main roster right now. Give him gold. Endless bloodline feud and a fun match against Cody, hopefully, in the future. She should beat Bailey. Yeah, I said it. Beats Logan Paul in Cleveland. Waiting for Roman to return as a face. May already need a new gimmick and theme song by next year. Hopefully fights Gargano. Not very confident after that Braun Breaker spear. Underrated. Hopefully gets some kind of screen time. Back to NXT in a year. Carl Anderson singles push, please. Will not lose. Endless bloodline feud, but will have a fire match against Tamatanga. I hope the storyline improves for them. It isn't their fault. Future face of SmackDown? I honestly have no idea where this fashion goes post LWO. Hopefully something cool happens. Big fan of everyone here. We'll have a random world title match again. A fun return, but needs something more. We'll have a hilarious post-breakup match. Please have a very long tag title reign. More awkward yelling. Hopefully Gargano faces Andrade and the Ciampa rivalry doesn't go on for a year. I'm sorry, I'm just over it. I've seen them wrestle each other so much in NXT. A cool character? Hopefully gets proper screen time. I miss you, Apollo. The guy who didn't speak for two years is the one going solo from the group. Underrated. Hopefully gets some kind of a push. Thank you all for watching this draft recap. Check out our WWE 2K24 series. And if you're a Star Wars fan, we have the ultimate Star Wars and pro wrestling crossover live on this channel this weekend on May the 4th. Catch it 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time if you would like to watch it live. But it will be available all day celebrating Star Wars and wrestling. You don't want to miss this crazy event. See you all in the next video.